For the last 10 years, Evan Zudulo has taught people how to grow healthy food in a hot and dry climate. He encourages farmers to plant fruit trees among crops so that there is always enough to eat. And the food forest that's on the side of his center is beautiful. Now Evans has set his goals even higher, bringing back the forest to his native island. We will want to bring back the rain. We want to ensure that when the rains are reliable enough, people can produce food. We want to see the hills heavily reforested with indigenous tree species, wild fruits. We want to see the ecosystem fully restored. We want to see the wildlife coming back. To turn this vision into reality, Evans and his team are strategically planting trees on the deforested slopes of the Likongo Hills that tower over the island. What we are doing here is to try and reintroduce some tree species. We are not really producing a plantation of trees, but reintroducing small numbers of macamia so that we have a diverse indigenous forest. So during our planting, we also introduce other tree species. Like in this case, we introduced acacia polyacantha. Some of the acacias, we try to hide them under the bushes. There's what we call nurse shrub effect among plants. When you plant a small tree under big ones, the, the bigger ones protect the small ones when, during drought or during harsh climatic conditions. To make planting and distributing seedlings possible at scale, Evans' organization is also running a huge nursery. We are planting over 20,000 seedlings a year. We collect seeds, propagate the seeds, and then we plant them here. The nursery is really important to us because it really tries to bring the culture of tree planting back into the community. While many of the seedlings are planted on the Ligongo Hills, some also go to schools to help create a more beneficial microclimate. And the remainder of the seedlings are picked up by farmers. My name is Solomon Owitio Singler. The, the day I came here from the, the last day of the permaculture design course, I started to make this farm. All the trees that I planted here come from Badilisha. All the fruit trees, everything, name it. Avocados, mangoes, bananas. The trees I got from Badilisha, you know, some of them are, uh, are medicinal, like uh, Moringa, like Neem. They are benefit to our health. At the same time, they told us that Moringa uh, uh, also is very good for that fodder. Also, it's very good for, for cows. And also, it's very good. It's chop and drop. Then the soil will, will be always fertile. And there are small young ones, like over 200, over 400 inside. So many of them. That's why I'm, I'm having that hope that in 10 years, 10 years time, all this section will be a food forest. While trees are also planted in the Ligongo Hills, Seedlings from the nursery are only used to reintroduce indigenous species that have been lost. Most of the team's efforts in the hills goes into helping nature come back on its own. By limiting grazing, preventing further deforestation and stopping soil erosion, damaged trees can recover and eventually self-seed. This approach is called assisted natural regeneration and it's the most important part of Evans' work. The natural regeneration is the process where a completely destroyed tree gets time to build new saplings and then they grow into big trees. For example, this tree had been cut completely and it was just a root stump. So when we, when we, we give it time to regenerate, the, it develops new trunks from the stem and then they go into a big tree. It is more effective as opposed to planted. You know, planted, you spend a lot of time planting, propagating, transplanting, and going to the plant in the field. And then a few days, you record mortalities. But for an assisted natural regeneration, you are very sure of the tree because it's already part of that ecosystem. This is an example of a check dam that my, my team has built here across the slope. The check dams are meant to reduce the speed of water and also to collect substrate materials. After collecting substrate materials, the grasses also grow. This is really a very important part of our work and it has enabled us to really conserve some of the gullies that we're building up. We sometimes introduce vegetations like sisal. The aloe vera in this case will multiply and in the few years we'll find it filling up all the check dams and holding the stones together. So the check dam will not need a lot of repairs in future. Through assisted natural regeneration, we, can, we have seen the emergence of uh, wild fruits like in this case, uh, Carissa idulis, which is delicious, nutritious, medicinal. It's good for humans and wildlife. 
And uh, we have also seen other wild fruits emerging, which are really very important to our ecosystem.